Good to see everybody that's here tonight. Uh, I got to say, I know it's a Tuesday night and you could be other places, but personally, I've been looking forward to this service all day long because it's one of my favorite ones that we have every year, Sister Maria. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a little while. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the service. We got any prayer requests over on this side? Sister Heidi? Yes, ma'am. Sister Eloise? Brother Billy? Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody else here in the middle section? Over here, Sister Maria? Yes, ma'am. Uncle Shane. Yes, Sister Mindy. Both of you. Sister Fran. Yes. Yes, ma'am. We'll remember her. Uh, let's keep remembering Soph and Lottie, too. They're still a little under the weather. And there's also, uh, I got up here, too, but there's a girl that I went to school with that I just seen earlier that she lost her six-month-old baby. And uh, it just broke my heart. So I want to remember her family. We got a lot of needs, but I know the Lord can take care of every single one of them. Amen. Amen. If we can, let's take them before him right now. Lord Jesus, God, I thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Thank you for what's going to transpire from this service. Thank you for the faith that's going to be lifted up, God. But God, I pray right now that every need that was lifted up, every hand that was raised, God, no matter what the need is, no matter how big or how small, I pray that you take care of every one of them, God. Let, let faith be restored in some families, God, from healings and miracles that are taking place from a, a Tuesday night Thanksgiving service. God, I'm praying for it, and I'm believing for it, God, and we're going to worship you as if it's already done. In the name of Jesus.
How many of you are blessed and can say that you're blessed? Amen. Uh, we're going to take up the tithing and offering at this time. And uh, we've got many reports coming in of people being blessed from this prayer, being blessed in their finances and in many other ways. Uh, so anyways, let's get right into it. There's a lot of ways to give. Give Lefi. PayPal at riverbendpentecostals.com. And for those of you watching, cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, P.O. Box 477, in New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. Amen. And this prayer does change things. From submission and obedience, this prayer changes things. So if we can, let's say this with faith, believing that God is going to bless us after this. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God, perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out and all that I do in Jesus name. Amen. Remember the, uh, the golden pan is for tithing and the wooden pan is for your offering. Give and worship as the praise team sings.
Praise the Lord. Can you just say hallelujah one time? Huh? There's something about it. There's something about it. The one thing, it's hard, Brother David, to just say hallelujah one time. Feels like something's got to come after it, like thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. And before you know it, Brother Blake, it don't take about five seconds of praise till something starts rising up in you. Your faith raises up. Your attitude gets better. Amen. We'll begin to thank the Lord. Please be seated. We're going to do a couple of housekeeping things, and then we're going to get right into the service. This is about Thanksgiving. Amen. This is about Thanksgiving. And we certainly don't want to give any kind of credence, credit, or any other attention to the enemy. So when we get up to testify this evening, we want to give thanksgiving. The Bible says in the last days, perilous times are going to come. And one of the signs that we're in perilous times is people are unthankful. That's not going to be the case here tonight. Amen. Amen. I believe we've got some folks that are thankful for what God has done for them, thankful for what God is doing for them and in their life and doing for those around them. Here's how we're going to do it. We have an incredible online church. Amen. Nobody tries to pretend it's a replacement for church. Matter of fact, those that watch online often text me and say, thank you for letting us watch online, but it ain't like being there. But it is a chance to connect. But one of the difficulties we have is that generally we are a pulpit and platform focused live stream. And a lot of times they'll put a comment or something and say, would you move that camera over so I can see my loved one? Will you move that camera over so I can see who's there? So what we're going to do tonight, and uh, first thing, this is about being thankful to the Lord. This ain't about everybody that's out there except we get the pleasure of sharing in your thanksgiving with you. That's important. That's important. How do you know you're thankful if you don't say it? All right, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to start over here on my left, and everybody that like to say something, this is not a mandatory thing. There's not a quiz. All right, you're not going to be made fun of if you don't. All right, there are people that did not come tonight because they're scared to get up here. That's something we got to get rid of. Because if you're scared to talk in front of people that love you and you love them, how in the world are you out there witnessing to strangers? which is what we're called to do. You better be able to tell somebody at work how thankful you are, and the reason that you're thankful is the Lord Jesus Christ has moved into your life. Amen? So we are going to uh, start on this side, and we have 11 chairs up here. So the first 11 people on this side, I'm going to have you, we're going to do it orderly. I want you to get up. I want you to come here, and I'd like for you to go to the microphone stand in order to testify. You take it in your hand. You don't have to leave it in there. But this is so our online church can both see and hear our testimonies with us. Amen. I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for our online watchers and online attenders. I'm very grateful. Very grateful. So I, I just want to try to give back a little bit. Amen. Is that okay? Is that all right? I want to try to give back a little bit. And uh, uh, Sister Leanne's already had enough of a stroke for everybody in here. She said, you going to make me stand up there? I said, I am if you want to testify. But, uh, yeah, she done stroked out, so it, and she survived. So everybody's going to be all right. But uh, we're going to ask you, we have a clock on the back wall that it's always there. I just don't always pay a lot of attention to it. But tonight, we're, we're going to have to pay attention to it. Try to keep your comments or your testimony. At the, at the funeral, they call it remarks. Keep your mark, remarks to two minutes or less. And, uh, and uh, don't underestimate the power of a GL. Uh, one time I was at a funeral at Mount Olives, and uh, 
they said, please keep your remarks to two minutes or less. And so this one sister, she was like the mother of the church. She got up and uh, the, the guy, she talked a minute. She talked like for, for like four minutes or something. Finally, he said, all right, mother, all right, mother, all right, mother. And she said, you got to hold on. <laughs> and then she talked for a little while longer. He said, all right, mother, all right, mother. And she said, I said, you got to hold on. <laughs> He said, oh, before it was over with, he was just singing with her. Because if you can't beat him, join him. You know, we, we probably don't want to do that tonight. But uh, I, I believe we've got some people in here with some incredible testimonies of thanksgiving for what God has done in their life. I want to rejoice with them. And I want to praise the Lord for what he's done in your life. There's a blessing in that. Amen? So uh, without further ado, um, we're going to... We are going to go over on this side, and uh, if, if there's 11 people that want to testify, if you do, raise your hand. Come on, Miss Jane. Come on, you three. Y'all come on. Come on, brother. See what we at? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, you're the one I'm going to have to come get a hook on. Sister Nadine, you two. How many, how many does that give us? Y'all go ahead and sit down up there. You're all right. We're not got to 11 yet. All right, keep your hands up. Go ahead. Sister Stacy's thinking about it. She just prayed through. <laughs> she turned into Sister Carol for a minute. She put it over her mouth like, I wonder what's going to happen here. All right, is that 11? Okay, you, you next. When, when these 11 get done, we'll let them go be seated. And then if Brother David's in a great one to start, he'll be a great example. So if you, you just stand up, come to the podium. You can take the mic, hand it to the one next. But please stand here. Well, I'm thankful for my church, first and foremost, thankful for my church family, thankful for my pastor and his wife and their family, what they meant to us. I'm so thankful for this life that God has given me. He saved me at a young age. It kept me through all these years, and I'm so thankful for everything, Brother Billy, that he's done for me, for my health. I've not had any issues with my health, and I'm so thankful for that. So thankful for everything that God is doing in our church, for the revival that God has brought to our church through these different different ones. So thankful for everything that he's done. And I just want to I just want to say I love him tonight. He's been good to me. I could say say a whole lot more, but he's been good to me. So uh, I, I, too, am very grateful for everyone who is here and for everything that God is doing in the life of our family and in my life. But I want to just tell people, you know, um, uh, Brother GL knows and you know I've been in a few churches, <laughs> right? And I'm grateful for the experiences and the people there in the, in the body of Christ uh, in its richness. But I just got to tell you, you know, I was telling Brother GL one day that um, so we all have hurts, right? You know, I'm 70 years old. I've had a few. And I just determined uh, quite a few years ago that it didn't matter about all the hurts because eventually I was going to be in the arms of Jesus and all that's going to melt in away, right? But then he sent me here. And I told Brother GL, so the thing was that Jesus said, I didn't have to wait. I'm going to send you to Riverbend. <laughs> that's the truth. hard to follow when she has you all choked up first thing <laughs> but I, I love the Lord so much I don't know why he loved me so much to sh show me the truth the revelation of who he was who he is so young I received the Holy Ghost at 22 I'm 55 so it's been a minute but I love him I'm so thankful for um, my family of course I love my family I'm so thankful for brother Jill and sister Amanda I love them so much where's your wife I love her outfit I love you more than your outfit, but that's really pretty. <laughs> I love y'all so much. I love this church, everyone in this church. love Riverbend so much. Um, I want to tell you all, this stuck out for, in my mind this week, thinking about this, is I am so thankful for everybody that came from recovery. I believe we received more than you all have received. I really believe that. Something is moving something's changing around here and 
And I'm so thankful for some things I don't even understand, but I'm just going to keep following. And I'm so thankful for the, what I feel when I walk into Mission, Missouri, what I felt when I walked into Mission, Missouri the first time. And I'm so thankful for Sister Miss Jane. I'm going to have to call her Miss Jane because that's how Brother Gilles says it. I'll never talk like him that deep. Sister Miss Jane, I'm so thankful for her. So thankful for what she does and she pours and keeps pouring into us. And I, I just love her so much. Just feel like we've always had everybody. I'm a hush because I'm taking up time. All right. Love everyone. So thankful. I'm kind of like Leanne. Ooh. <laughs> I don't like to get up in front of people, but I am so grateful for a God that loved me enough to not give up on me, that had patience with me, that didn't let me go. He worked with me. He protected me. He kept me when I was out there in the middle of nowhere. I was raised in church. Mother may taught me how to be faithful to church, go all the time. And if I, I don't have a lot of patience or I haven't had. And so I've always said that if God had the patience I had, I wouldn't be here today. I'm thankful for the church. I'm thankful for all you people. I love you all. I'm thankful for the pastor and his dear wife. And God bless everyone. Hi, everybody. I am so thankful. My name's Tricia. I'm one of uh, Miss Jane's Lady in Christ. Um, I'm so thankful for everybody in here. God put me here for a reason because that, that devil, I was looking him in the eyes like God had me by the collar of my shirt and drug me up from being a savage and a drug addict to feeling a love to being a loyal woman in God and my new friends and family here. Gail, I thank you. My friend over there, Amanda, and everybody in here. Good evening, everybody. I'm Ronnie Sells, and I'm a faithful believer in Jesus Christ. And it is so wonderful to be here. Sister Ashley, if you'll grab that camera, I'll do a lap, I swear, right now. <laughs> Uh, I, I love this church family. Uh, I, you know, talk about this time of, of year for Thanksgiving. I, I made it six years on gratitude in, in recovery from drug and alcohol addiction and every kind of hurt and hang up that, that you can think of. But um, I had no idea what recovery was about until I walked through the doors of River Bend. Shannon, Bernard, uh, McGuire, and, and GL, and, and this church family. I love the Bobos. Um, but, um, I, I want my son Connor to come up a minute. Th this church welcomed us with open arms. It'll welcome you too. And, uh, we were, we repented of our sins, were baptized and received the gift of the Holy Ghost in February. And we've been on fire for Jesus ever since. And, uh, I, I, I just have a, a, a grateful, humble heart tonight and, uh, Miss Jane, I love you, and, and all the folks of Mission, Missouri, Lacey and, and her family, and Shannon, and I, I, I could go on and on and trip. King, you've been such a, such a blessing to my son and a mentor, and, and uh, thank you to this Riverbend Church family. Happy Thanksgiving. Hi, everybody. My name is Macy. Um, I am home from college right now, so like if you don't recognize me, I was here in the summer, but you know, I got, got things to do over there. Um, <laughs> like an education, you know. But um, I just wanted to say tonight that I am so thankful that the Lord allowed me to be here this week. I don't get off work very often, and when my boss told me I was off, I was like, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm so ready to go home. So um, I just want to thank him for allowing me to be here tonight and be home with my family and be in this church. I've missed it so much. There's there's nowhere like it. I love it here, and I love everybody here. I always feel so welcome, even when I've been gone for months and months. So that's what I'm thankful for. <clears throat> I'm, <clears throat> my name is Lacey Robinson. I'm a faithful believer in Jesus Christ, and I'm going to cry. <laughs> but I'm... <clears throat> 
I'm so thankful for it, the love that I feel here and have since the very first day that I came. I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for my recovery. And I'm thankful for... Um, Finally being able to take an honest look at myself and not be afraid of what I see. And I'm thankful for <clears throat> all the people that he's put in my life to help me along the way. And I'm thankful for um, the things that are coming off of me. And I'm thankful for who I'm becoming. And um, I just, you know, I give God all the glory for that. But I also want to thank all of you for, for helping me along the way. And that's what I'm thankful for. Isn't this a blessing to hear all these people? that have come from all kinds of walks of life that we don't even know anything about. I've told so many people, I lived such a sheltered life all of my life. If anybody doesn't know who I am, I'm Nadine Bent, and I've been around here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but I do want to say that I thank the Lord for the church. I thank the Lord for his blessings on my life. I'm thankful that he's kept me through this last two years. I've gone through something that I thought I never could go through. But with the Lord's help, I've made it. But I am thankful for what the Lord is doing, and I just want to be pliable in his hands to be able to be used for anything that he would want me to do. Well, I'm Shannon, and isn't it great to be here tonight? Uh, I feel like I've got so much to be thankful for, probably more than anybody in this church. But uh, make it real quick, or, or do I get to say I got five minutes till closing? <laughs> it take 25 more minutes. But anyway, that's my pastor. I'm proud of him. Uh, but anyway, I'm so thankful for my recovery fam family. Um, you guys have just made me a better person. Th this has been an awesome trip, and uh, you all make me so much better. But you know, as I thought about what I'd say tonight. Over the past year, um, what I've realized is now that I've grown up a little bit and started doing a little bit of work for the kingdom of God, all of the people that, that have done something in this church over the years, I applaud you. Um, I see how much work it goes into doing a work for the kingdom of God, and everything that we've ever accomplished so far in this church, so far with our recovery group, um, has been because of each person in this in this congregation, uh, from from the teachers, from the Sunday school teachers, from the people that babysit, from the people that cook. You've made people feel loved here, and and it truly is an honor to be a Riverbend Pentecostal. Uh, I've thought of so many different things to say tonight, but the one thing that kept sticking out in my mind was I am so proud to be a member of this church. You guys make me proud to bring people here and to make them feel so loved, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, and I, I, the, there's so many different things that uh, over my life that I feel like I've accomplished, things that I've done good, a whole lot I've done bad. The one thing that God has blessed me with is the best family that I could ever ask for, my wife. I wouldn't be where I am today without her being by my side. And my children, my, they are the best children that a person could ever have, and I love them so much. My, my son-in-law, Richard, I love him to death. He's the best. And Kaylee, my new partner back there, when my kids get on me, she's always got my side. So I love you all so much. What I'm most thankful for, I guess, um, I was trying to think yesterday. And as everybody, most everybody got up here and they had to tell everybody who they were. Do y'all know how amazing that is? I mean, that is just awesome. I mean, the, the fact that you might not know who that person is, that is awesome. That's what I'm so thankful for. And the people that God's placed in my life this past year, God knew that I would need these beautiful ladies that has helped me through a really terrible year, through hardships, but they were right there. 
and um, they helped me hold up, and I'm thankful for that. They've been wonderful friends, and um, it's just crazy how, um, like, like Crystal's mom and me became friends years ago, and then, and now look where, you know, Crystal is and Kaylee, and it's just God has a perfect plan, and it's just when you sit, and, you know, people reveal different pieces of the puzzle, you know, and you're like, only God could do that. Only God could, and I'm so thankful for that. You know, I'm still a work in progress. Lord knows I've got a long way to go. But you guys help me be better. You help me want to be better. And I'm I'm very thankful and grateful for that. And I'm grateful for my earthly family, too. So I love you guys. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad we're getting this on Facebook. I'm probably going to have to go back and watch this. Again, this is this is just wonderful. Are there any more over on this side that'd like to testify? Come on up here. If you got your hand up, those of you, come on up here. Come on up here. Angel raised his hand. We think we know what he might be going to say. <laughs> Go sit down down there, buddy. Go ahead, friend. Go ahead. Hi, buddy. Yep. Okay, how about here in the middle section? We'll fill it out. The middle section, go ahead. There's two. Come on, Mama. Brother Billy and Brother Ira. Boy, I tell you what, I love Brother Ira now, let me tell you. Oh, he's a witness for this church now, let me tell you what. Is there anybody else here in the middle? My goodness. Is it full now? No, it ain't, it ain't quite. It ain't quite. We got room for one more. Who's, who's going to change their mind? Yeah, I hope she is after a while. I hope she is. Uh, Meredith, you weren't. Oh, I thought she, I thought she had a problem before she got up here. <laughs> uh, and this been great. Don't you enjoy the first group that was up here? Man, what a what a blessing! What a blessing! All right, Senor Angel, stand up, buddy. Come up here and so they can see you. You're gonna be on TV. Testify what you're thankful for. It, it, it's on. Testify. It's okay. What are you thankful for? Um, I'm thankful for um, the faith with the faith. Ah, I'm thankful for the faith. So, no. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Fran, and if you couldn't understand him, he's grateful for this place and that he's able to come here. That's what he said. So, um, I just want to say, um, two minutes is not enough time, um, but uh, I am grateful that uh, God saved me when I was out there doing the things I was doing myself and my family. Um, in all reality, I probably shouldn't even be alive, so I'm very grateful that he carried me through. I'm grateful that he brought me to Missouri, where I only knew one person. Um, he brought me out of where I was at to... Um, find something new and I did. I'm grateful for the day that Bernard he told me to step over there, sorry. Um, the day that Bernard showed up in my driveway and um, invited me to a urban recovery and where I met a Stacey and Shannon and everybody and they invited me to church and it's just snowballed since then. Came to church. I was um, I was saved here, um, baptized, um, Receive the Holy Ghost. Um, I'm grateful that I was able to bring my mother out from California and bring her out of where she was at. And now my daughter. Um, and my grandson. And I'm grateful for safe travels and everybody in this church and everybody in my Riverbend recovery family. Um, I didn't know anything about God before I got here and how much of a, of, of, how many mercies I was given in his grace. And I am so grateful today that I'm able to have that in my life. So thank you. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, I'm really thankful for Mission Missouri and River Bend Church. This is the first church I've ever walked in and felt like everybody accepted me, even for myself. 
because most of my life I've felt like a burden. And um, when I was little, I went through a lot of the hardships, and God was my best friend, and then I let him go, started questioning him. And then, but he was always in my heart, and since being back in recovery, I've been clean for 65 days, and I'm thankful for that. And um, with God's help, I'm going to remain that way for the rest of my life. I'm thankful for my children. This year, I get to spend Thanksgiving with my kids, and I'm going to be clean for the first time in many, many years. And I'm looking forward to getting to go Christmas shopping with my check, because I got me a job, and I'm thankful for that. God's been blessing me, so I'm just, I got a lot of blessings. You're not the only one nervous. <laughs> Hi, most of y'all haven't met me. My name's Rebecca. Um, first of all, I'm thankful for Miss Missouri and them giving me a chance to push me forward to save my recovery. These ladies, I wanted to run when I first got there, but I didn't. Hey, uh, they all talked me into staying, and I'm also thankful that for the Ripken Church. Um, I actually feel welcomed in somewhere that I haven't really been felt welcomed in all my life. And I'm thankful that I'm continuing to be almost 15 months sober. Okay, so... First and foremost, of course, I am very thankful for my family, but that's not really what I want to speak on tonight. Um, I am agree with you, Sister Maria. I think this recovery class has brought so much more to us than what we could ever have given back to them. Like, y'all are amazing, and it's a blessing every time I walk in and see a new face sitting over there. Um, I love it. I love it, and I'm so grateful for it. Um, I'm also thankful for the ladies that are here in this church. You know, not that you guys ain't wonderful, but you ladies are amazing. And there's never a moment or a time when I don't feel like I could reach out to any of y'all, any of y'all, and you would be there. And, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, one in particular is Kim, and she is, my go-to. She's my rock. Like, she is my, no matter what it is, I can take it to her. And here's the thing. If y'all don't have a friend like Kim, you need a Kim in your life, just not this one. And this one's mine. But, I mean, even when I'm not where I should be or doing what I should be or whichever, she will, she'll call me out on it. She does not hold back. I mean, she, she holds me accountable, but she's also there when I need a shoulder or an ear, or just whatever the need might be, she's there. Um, next thing, I am very grateful for my pastor and his wife. Y'all are amazing people. Perfect example. You're a perfect example, Mandy, of what, what it, a godly woman is, and I love it. This that you're teaching us right now has <laughs> done a number on me, and it, it's it's not there. I'm not complete, but it's, I'm, I, he's working on me. And this is something I could never thank you enough for what you're teaching us on Wednesday nights because it has opened me up to see I've had some walls built that were so high and Fort Knox had nothing on the walls that I've had in my life and around my heart. Um, it's helping to bring them down. It's helping to bring them down. It's okay to be offended. It's what you do with it, and, and I'm learning that, and it's amazing. Um, I'm thankful for this church, and there's no place that I'd rather be. Most of all, I am thankful that even at my worst, he loves me. I told her, do not make me cry before I get up there. It's not fair. <clears throat> This year, uh, I'm thankful for everything that the Lord has blessed me with. I'm thankful for Leanne, because Lord knows the last two years have been challenging, but she was there no matter what, no matter what, any time, any place, she was there. I'm thankful for my kids, because they really have made it easy. 
I have been blessed with some really good kids and they've made raising them easy and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for this season. It's like there's just so many seasons I've went through while I've been here and I'm thankful for this season because I know that this season I have been chastised by the Lord. He has shown me things that are not good and he has put people in my path to help me correct them to help seek him through that and I know that not only in this season am I going to be comforted as always but I'm going to be made whole this time and everything's going to be better and above all for a moment in May me and my husband will celebrate 18 years of marriage and that is something that I cannot Two years ago, I didn't think it was going to happen. But I know without a doubt it's going to happen. And he's been made whole, and I'm going to be made whole. And I'm just thankful. I'm thankful that he's mindful of me where I'm at. And he sends the people to me that I need. And I'm just I'm thankful for that. She wanted to turn me off. <laughs> My testimony is going to be different than, than what everybody else has been testifying because all day I've been praying, Lord, give me the right thing to say. And a lot of you people here don't know. Um, I, I'm Judy King Williamson. I'm Brother GL's mother. And a lot of people don't know um, some things that have happened in our life that have made him be the man that he is. Some of these things made him who he is today. Some of these things made me who I am. All these things did. But I'm going to tell one thing that happened in our life. And like I said, my testimony is different. Several years ago, probably about in 1970, I'm not good with this. About 79, I think, uh, I was on the phone actually to Brother Shannon's mother. And we were talking. And all at once, I heard screaming in my backyard. I don't mean just like the kids screaming. I heard screaming like agony in my backyard. And I ran out. I laid the phone on the floor and I ran outside to see what was going on. And, and my grandpa and my husband were out there. And my husband was holding Joseph Daniel. He was four years old. He was holding him and he was speaking in tongues and he was screaming. And my grandma, I mean, my grandpa said, he's killed him. He's killed him. He's dead. He's killed him. And he had run over him with a tractor. And he had tire marks on his forehead. You can believe this or not. He ran over him with a, I think it was a Ford tractor. And that child should have been dead. He was a little bitty thing. Joseph Daniel was a little bitty child. And I was standing on the porch like, well, he's crying, so he's not dead. And it was like they were all nuts or something. I couldn't get in my mind what had actually happened. And Grandpa said he ran over him with the tractor. And we called the ambulance and the, the medics came and they said, well, maybe you need to go on and take him to the hospital. There was not one thing wrong with that child but a broken collarbone. And his daddy said when he pulled him out from under the boards that he had run over, that he felt like he had broke his collarbone. But he was lifeless when he pulled him out from under there. You can't make me believe ever that God didn't bring that child back to life. His daddy was speaking in tongues all over our backyard. And we there was nothing wrong with him but a little break right here, and that was it. God saved that child. And it, it, it's, it's made me be, I, I don't hardly ever get down to pray that I don't thank the Lord for what he did in our life that day. Because our neighbor called us. And she was a Catholic lady, and she called me, and she said, I've just been to the country club, and I told them that I saw a modern-day miracle in my backyard today. She said, because that child should have been dead. She called me to tell me that. She said, I saw a modern-day miracle, and we did. There was the, the, the words can't even explain what happened to us that day in that backyard, but God saved my child. And he did it out of his mercy and grace, and that's made me part of who I am today. I love the Lord, and I'm so thankful for our pastor and his wife, of course. But I'm thankful for this church and the heritage that I have here. I'm connected to almost everybody in this room in some way or 
shape, form, or fashion. And I'm so thankful for that. And my two minutes are up. So I love the Lord tonight. I'm not a speaker, and especially tonight with this head cold and stuff, but I couldn't pass up not getting up and speaking for my Lord tonight and how good and let people know, my friends that's watching tonight, there's nothing like having a relationship with our God. He will lead you. And guide you. Yes, I like the world. I like some things of the world. But there's nothing that I could say to you that would compare to the love of God. When you fall, totally fall in love with God. And he becomes your everything. He becomes your everything. And you get a relationship with him. You spend every day with God. I started that when I lived in the country, and there was no, it was me and God. That, that was all, that's all I had for several years there, was me and God, and it was wonderful to learn the things, and God taught me a lot of things, and he'd say, uh-uh-uh, if something, if I get something that really was getting into my mind or my body or, or you know, my thoughts or something, he'd say, no, we're not going to go there. You know, but I tell you, he's been so, so good to me. I can't tell it all. That psalm, he's been so good to me, I cannot tell it all that he's done. It would take a long time. But he's been the best thing that's ever happened in my life, and I want to thank him tonight. Praise the Lord, everyone. I think I'll go with Brother McKinney's. I'll just say ditto. <laughs> but I'm kind of like uh, Sister Judy. I got a little different testimony. And Shannon, I don't want to waste this time on TV. <laughs> Me and Shannon talked about something here all two or three weeks ago. And I tell you, I'm so happy that I've not let CBS, NBC, ABC, and all these other media outfits blind my mind to how good this world is. I, we was talking, and I started telling Shannon the things that I know just of this past year people's done. I know there was a guy up there cutting beans that y'all all would know him, and a farmer was done with his crop. He was coming down the levee. He knew it was about to rain, and it was about the end of the year, and he was struggling. He just pulled his combine, his whole crew in there, cut that man's beans for him just because you probably know what I'm talking about. And then there was another man up at Lowe's that I know of that just bought a new house, and he was behind him in the checkout line. And he said, well, y'all bought a big old house. Looks like a lot of work. And he said, yeah, we're doing what little we can, you know, as we get the money along and stuff like that. And he had like two or $3,000 worth of stuff he was getting. And the man standing behind him said, well, here, I'm going to pay for that. And then not only that, that Monday, that was on a Saturday, that Monday, he showed up with his whole work crew and helped him put down hardwood floors and paint the rooms and all that. And Brother David can testify to this. I know a man that needed a picker part this year. John Deere was on strike. They didn't have one in the United States or Canada. Nowhere. He's still like three or 400 acres. There was another man that just happened to be talking to a guy. Where was he from? Malden? Portageville? And he was talking about how hard parts was to get to, and he told him about this Bill Sollinger guy. You know, he didn't know him. He said, well, you tell him to come over here and take the part off of my picker and put on his so he can finish his crop out. He didn't know him from Adam, you know. Never seen him before in his life. I've been the recipient of doing some Good Samaritan stuff, and I've seen a lot of Good Samaritan stuff done. I know when I very first started in the spray business, I was in the business about two weeks, and I didn't even have a water trailer yet. And I rode over to Kentucky with John Palmer just to help him unload some stuff. And when we pulled in there, the guy had a gooseneck trailer with a big water tank on it. And John said, what do you want for that water trailer? 
He said, oh, I don't want to sell it. He said, I just use it a little bit, putting out fertilizer or whatever. And John said, well, if you see one and on a pretty good sale, let us know because kind of looking for one, you know. And he said, well, just take that one. Just use it. And for two years, I used that water trailer, and every time I brought it back to him, he acted like I was doing him a favor. He didn't know me from Adam. But I'd just like to say I'm so thankful tonight for the good Samaritans of this world, and they're all over. We need to lose that media and look at these good Samaritans and thank God for it. I'm thank God by be, uh, to be here. My name is Ira Foster, and I lo love this church. I love all of y'all, and I'm so glad my pastor he put me on the right path to, with the good Lord. Cause I sure was going the wrong way, but I'm thanking for putting me in the right way. So that's all I got to say. Now. Thank you. I am thankful for a lot of things. Uh, this church, obviously. <laughs> I've been here my whole life, and I've quite, I've uh, threatened a couple times to leave, but <laughs> I ain't ever done it. But after that stunt he just pulled a few minutes ago, tonight might be the night. <laughs> um, I am thankful for my family, my mom, my dad, John Michael, probably the most. I'm just saying, but um, I think back to when the year wasn't so easy, when everything happened with my dad and my mom, and but I, there's a lot of times that I'll just start thinking, but you were made for such a time as this, and I think our family was made <laughs> for such a time as this, because uh, if that wouldn't have happened, and it didn't feel good when it did, but... It was so worth it for that left side of this building. <laughs> and like Miss Jane and uh, Ronnie and just all these people that my life's better because of you. Um, I'm thankful for Lilburn Elementary. That is the best job in the whole world. I could stand up here all day and tell y'all that I just can't really say much except it's the best job. And because of that job, you know, I have relationships people that are here with me tonight and it wasn't a coincidence it wasn't and it's not because of me but our paths crossed for a reason you know I'm even thankful for the Bank of New Madrid because the bank, Erica wouldn't probably be here if it wasn't for the Bank of New Madrid Claire wouldn't now Heather's here I mean it's not it's not none of it's never been a coincidence and I'm thankful for that thankful for my primary care physician nurse Sophia <laughs> and Paige and Casey and Erica, I don't know what I'd do without them. They keep me going, and I'm most thankful for Richard. I still have a big crush on him after all these years. And <laughs> Well, it is. And I still ain't figured out how this happened, but I ain't going to question it because it might make him change his spots. <laughs> but uh, I'm thankful for my nana. My nana is my best friend in the whole world. And she loves me more than any of the rest of them. And I'm thankful for that. And the last thing I'm thankful for, Gigi's probably going to roll his eyes. And I don't really care. But I am thankful for my dog. Because I truly believe that God made her just for me. And I'm going to cry about a lot of things. Cry about your dog. But I think that I needed her more than I've needed anybody else to be honest and I know that Paige found her in that ditch at Risco because I needed her she's at home watching the fireplace on the tv go crackle you know but but I'm thankful for this year and like brother Billy said there is good people and my heart just is over full with there is so much good it's not all bad there is so much good stuff and I'm thankful for Dodd and Gigi, too, I guess. Anybody here in the middle that didn't get to come up that would like to? 
Anybody else here in the middle section that'd like to come up here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if we got time for all that or not, but uh, I was I was just thinking about some folks probably need to be up here, but they're all scared and stuff. But is there anybody over here on this side that like to like to to come on up here? Two minutes, brother Seth. <laughs> Two minutes, brother Seth. I'll tell you what. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I have enjoyed it. I enjoy it every time we do it. We only missed one year out of about the last what five, six, seven years, something like that. We've done this. And has anybody changed their mind? Want to come up and say a few words that didn't get to? Maybe anybody. All right, come on, Sister Heidi. I thought you might. I thought you might. She does a tremendous job for us back there in the media booth, and and uh, and then there comes Junior, our our Junior Girl Scout. She's been learning back there in the back, and we're trying to get some more folks so Sister Heidi and. They can rotate and get out here and worship, amen, and that's important. But uh, how many know the Lord is just really, really good? He's good all the time. Brother Larry. All right. Well, I guess uh, Terrence made me go first. He chickened out, <laughs> so I ain't scared. But I uh, hope you all can understand me tonight. I'm about to lose my voice, but it'll be all right. But I'm thankful that. God puts people in your path when you're at your lowest. There were some times in my life that I was pretty low. And even after I come back to church, there was a time in my life that I was pretty low. And I'll remember sitting at, a, at my house one day and me and my wife talking. And got a knock at the door and I opened the door and I never would have thought I ain't seen him in years. And there my pastor and sister Amanda stood. And I was like, what in the world are they doing here? And... Through some talking, here I stand today, and I thank God for them. I thank him for his leadership. I thank him that he truly cares for people because he's proved it in my own life. I'm thankful for my wife and my children. I'm thankful that though my wife is scared to death to pray for me when I ask her to, that through some coercion, she actually does pray for me. She might have to hide her face every once in a while, Brother David, but she will because I grab her hand and stick it on my forehead and I say, pray for me now. There are times in my life when I need prayer. You know, it's not just me praying for somebody else, but there's been some times in my life that I've been pretty low and I'm thankful for a family that will gather around me in my bed, that will all hug together at night and we pray together. And I thank God for that because I had that when I was little and that's one thing that I remember my whole life was getting around and learning about the Lord and praying together and talking together. And I'm thankful for all these new faces that I see. As Brother GL talked about Monday or Sunday, you truly do make me better. Every time I come here, and I know Brother Walter ain't here today, tonight and Sister Peaches, but every time I see them come through the door, something in me is like, woo! I'm just excited, you know, at, at, at people that worship and people that praise and people that magnify the Lord un uninhibited. And I want to be that for somebody else just like you are for me. I thank God for each and every one of you. I love this church. I love this people. And God bless you. I want to say tonight that I'm most grateful that the Lord worked on me in a mighty, mighty way when I first started coming here. The man I was way back then is no longer, but... He's changed me tremendous, and I owe it to my family because if they would have never wanted to start going to church, I wouldn't be here probably. I'm so grateful that the Lord has changed me. I'm grateful for the men that I have in my life in this church. So thankful for the small group that we have, Brother Shannon, Blake, Brother GL, and Cody. I'm super thankful for Cody Pikey. He's not here today, but he's almost like my best friend. Me and him are really, really close. We started a podcast together, and I'm grateful for it. I just want to say I'm truly grateful for Brother GL, man. 
You're real. And I love that about you. And I'm so grateful for you and Sister Amanda. What y'all bring to this church, it makes me want to be better. I'm just grateful for everybody here. I love everybody here. So thankful for y'all. My name is Seth, and uh, I'm mainly thankful for my family, most of all. I'm also thankful for everyone here and even those that cannot be here. Thankful for my pastor, too. Even every time it seems like I'm having a problem, he has a solution for it. And, uh, something I was wanting to talk about for a minute is I also, too, had went through a little rough time in my life. Back when I was in, like, a younger time, like elementary school, I was not really that good. I was very socially awkward. I didn't know how to make friends that much. So I was very easy target for bullying. And as I continued, like, going through this, it brought a lot of trouble between me, those other students, and school and at home. It just, uh, it just put me in a bad place. And I just started having bad thoughts about my own self. Started wishing I wasn't even here. And I just, I was holding on to very little. And then at one turning point, there was something that let me hold on. There was something. I didn't know what it was, but there was something that told me to hold on a little bit longer. And as I kept holding on, eventually I got to tell everyone what was wrong. I, I got to tell every, I get, I get to tell them what was wrong because they really didn't understand me at the time. And I get to under, I get to explain it to the school, and I eventually made those enemies my friends. And uh, to this day. We have a lot of respect for each other. I'm glad the Lord brought me through the place. But the main thing I think you see from here is even when nobody else knows where you're at, God knows what you're going through. God God knows what's killing you on the inside. And he knows what to do to fix it. And you just got to keep holding on with that faith. I'm Dana, and um, Seth just stole my testimony, pretty much. But um, I am first and foremost thankful for God never giving up on me and not giving up on my family. Um, you know, there's we all have rough times. We all go through rough times. Um, super thankful for my pastor, Brother G.L., before you were my pastor, I loved you then, and I had a feeling that someday you would be my pastor, and I'm so thankful that you are, and I'm so thankful you're my pastor's wife. But, um, and then I'm thankful that I could sit up here with my family to testify for Thanksgiving. Like, as a little girl, whenever you are dreaming about your life, you have certain dreams. You want this perfect family, which... We all know now that there's not a perfect family. But you know what? This is close as my family gets to be a perfect sitting here on these pews in this Riverbend Pentecostal church. And not only that, the rest of y'all are my family too. I love each and every one of you. Um, I love all the Riverbend uh, people that have been coming. Um, I'm just so thankful what God are, is doing in, in y'all's lives. I see this harvest coming. And I just pray that God makes us all ready for the harvest. Um, I also want to say where he stole my testimony is, you know, I want to thank God for the valleys. It's hard to do, especially when you're in a valley. We all have to go through them. But when you're in that valley, you think there's never going to be a time that you come out of that valley. Went through some severe depression in my life. But God has brought me through. And not, as he, not only has he brought me through, he's brought me through better than I've ever been. And I'm getting better each and every day. And I'm so thankful for that during times of my loneliness or lowness in life whenever I didn't think that anybody cared. And even that point, sometimes when I thought God didn't care, he would send someone, whether it be a knock on the door, a phone call, a text, 
One day I come home from work and I was sitting there crying and my son out of nowhere just showed up. And I'm like, what are you doing here? And he goes, God told me to come see you. That's how mindful he is of us, church. He cares about our every thought, our every need. He does not want to see us sad, but we do have to go through things on this earth. But um, I'm so thankful where he's brought my family from. You know, 23, almost 24 years ago, I sit right here and anointed Blake. Or I didn't anoint him. But I, he was anointed by Brother McKinney right here where he's sitting. And now he preaches the word. How thankful I am for that. Um, I'm so thankful what God's doing in Seth's life. You know, a lot of people, he, he, they don't know him but God is using him in a mighty way. And then my husband, you know, if y'all could see where he was brought from, you know, all of us actually. But I'm just so thankful what God is using each and every one of us for. And I just want to say that I'm really thankful for everyone here. And I love y'all. Uh in two minutes, there's, it's pretty much impossible for me to say everything that I want to say. Um, I felt the Holy Ghost so much throughout these testimonies tonight. I want to start off by saying I'm thankful for my elders. Every one of y'all. For every word y'all bled out in prayer. Every meal you fasted. All the blood, sweat, and tears that have went into this church I can't put into words how thankful I am to stand here. I'm thankful for Brother GL. There's never a time that I can't call him. He's always there, no matter what. Just like anybody else, I'm sure there's, there's nothing that I wouldn't do for him. Uh, I didn't have to uh, really struggle to come up with anything to talk about tonight. The Lord laid something on my heart very simple. I just want to say... I'm thankful for my relationship with the Lord. Uh, I've always heard how the Lord can change you, but I've experienced it. Um, I'm not perfect, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There, there's nothing that he won't change, and I'm thankful that I can get into his presence and just be honest and be myself. There's no... No matter how embarrassing it is, I've taken some embarrassing things to the Lord, but it doesn't, there's nothing that I can't take to Him. My thoughts have changed. The way I talk has changed. The way I dress has changed. The way I conduct myself at my job, in my home, everything has changed. Not, but, not because of me, but because of Him that works in me. I'm thankful for every minister in this church, every ministry, all of the ministers. I look up to them, every one of y'all. Sister Casey. Sister Kim, the children's ministry, the recovery ministry. I am so thankful that I'm able to sit in there. I'm so thankful. Y'all have no idea how much that has helped me grow. No idea. Brother Shannon, Brother Ronnie, Sister Lacey, thank you, Sister Friend. I'm just thankful for every person in this place, every person online. Thank you. The only scary part about going towards the end is I might get a preaching spirit on my brother Jill. <laughs> but uh, I got to thinking about what I was going to say. Uh, I've got so much to be thankful for in my life. I've got my wonderful wife and our dog and my family. And, you know, I mean, me, her, and the fuzzy one. I mean, that, that is my family. <laughs> but I think the thing that I'm the most thankful for is having this man right over here that was in a position to take a chance on me. And he says all the time that it was a God thing that I'm here, but he could have told God no. He could have said, no, that ain't how we do things. He could have said, no, it's not time. No, he ain't the right person to be in that job. But he didn't. And it seems like it's a 50-50 shot whenever he goes and preaches somewhere, he's going to tell my story. And uh, 
if you stick around long enough, for those of you that don't know me or haven't heard it before, you're probably going to hear it again before long because it comes up quite often, but it's, it's just pretty cool how God works. And, um, but because he listened to God and took a chance on me, I've learned how to, how to minister. I've learned what it means to minister this year. Uh, I feel like that, you know, we, Meredith and I have been over the youth for almost six years now. And this year, God really worked on me and taught me really what it means to minister. It, it's not just standing behind that desk right there. It's not, it's not just having a pulpit ministry, but through my job and the people that I've come in contact with, uh, I've learned that ministry is whenever you see somebody that's feeling down, offer to pray with them and actually do it when you offer. Ministry is whenever somebody trusts you enough to let you know there's something going on in their life and, and you've been studying and you have the wisdom already and some scriptures in your back pocket that you can give them from the word of God that's going to comfort them. Whenever you're preparing for opportunities to minister and then they happen and you can help somebody. Whenever whenever you can be a good Samaritan, Brother Billy, you know, whenever, whenever you have the opportunity to be like Jesus and you can. That's what it means to minister. And that's what God has revealed to me over this past year. And I, I've been preaching at our youth group, you know, seek out opportunities to minister. Seek out opportunities to help somebody, even if it's just somebody that they need somebody that will listen to them. It's ministry. And I, that's probably the main thing that I'm thankful for over this past year is that I've really learned what it is to be a minister. And that's, that's what I want to leave you with tonight. I got a whole lot that I, that's been running through my mind all day and even tonight that I can sit up here and say I'm thankful for. Um, one thing, I guess if you talk about a, a main thing, Brother Jeff Arnold preached a message one time. And uh, I don't remember what the title was or anything, but, and it was at Steel at Exceed Conference when he said, you don't even have to be thankful all the time, but you have to have an attitude of thankfulness. Can anybody attest to sometimes when you're going through them valleys or going through them problems, sometimes you don't feel too good right then. You don't see the blessings that, have, that are actually right out there in front of you. Because at the end of the day, we're all blessed. We, if you really sit down and think about it, you can find a blessing somewhere in your life. But I, I've learned that even in my valleys and in my seasons of going through change or something messing up, that you can have an attitude of thankfulness. And in that attitude of thankfulness, you'll find yourself coming out of that valley. It's one of the, the, my prayers that I prayed for tonight is, uh, Lord, let, let there be a, like just a feeling of joy in here tonight. And I knew there would be. There is every year. That's why I've looked forward to it so much. You can't help but feel the love, feel the joy. Because when you start hearing people tell how thankful they are, you forget about all the bad things. You forget if, if, if they can be thankful, it even uplifts my spirit. So that, that's one reason why I love to be here. But I, I'm thankful. And like I said, I could be up here forever telling everything that I'm thankful for. Uh, every, I mean, my family. My heritage, uh, I've been raised in this too, and though I'm young, I've been here a long time. And it's because of my family and because of my family's family and the people that have went on before me, the pioneers of this church. And I was thinking as Brother Billy was talking uh, about all the different people that have just done good things in this church. My family, not my actual blood family, but my family from brothers and, and when we loaded up and went to Louisiana to work. How many people view work and, and sacrifice as fun? But I, I, that's one of my prime memories of my whole life is how close we come together and, and affected the world. We really affected the world by just a group of men coming together. And Brother Billy himself, he, he's always, I call him Uncle Billy now that I'm married into the family. But he even, you know, he takes me over there, lets me deer hunt, kill my first deer with a bow and and then me and him had a few different stories of our own. You know, another miracle where it was a blessing that I was with him because he had an attack out in the woods. And I was able to drive him home. And there's just so many different things. And people that have come through this church and come through my life 
and I was thinking about it, and sometimes it, it's sad, but Aunt Kim was talking about seasons. There's people that come and go, as seasons do. Sometimes there's people that are placed in your life that are there for a reason, for ministry or for joy, to lift your spirits or whatever the reason is, but that's a season in your life, and I've had a few seasons, and it's like people, there's some people that have, have had to go. You know, I experienced it last year. But I was thinking, and, and even the people, you know, look at Brother Rice and, and uh, Brother Pete and so many different people that it, it, there comes a time and we've got to go uh, one way or another. But them seasons, they don't just, they don't just die out. I was thinking as the seasons of fall and uh, winter and everything come and go, I was outside my yard covered in leaves. And somebody commented on Facebook the other day and said something about, you don't have to rake up leaves. They just deteriorate and go away. But they really don't. They may look like they're gone away, but them leaves, Brother David, are what helps the next year's grass begin to grow. In the field, what dies is what helps the next year's crop come and be better than it was the year before. Up here in the river bottoms, the flood is what fertilizes the ground for the next spring. And I was thinking, though, though the people come and go, and, and maybe they don't even pass away, but maybe they've come into your life for a, a period of time, and then they've had to move away, or they, they've had to step out of your life for a, a particular reason. There's different seasons that are there for you. And, and even new people, we talk about all the new faces that are here, and, and really there's a whole lot that aren't here. Maybe you're watching tonight. But even the new people, there's seasons that I'm going through right now. There's people, uh, Brother Blake and Brother Larry and Brother Richard and Terrence. And I could sit, I could literally sit up here and probably go through the entire room. Brother David, so many different people. Helping Connor has helped me, Brother Ronnie. So And just like Meredith said, we're better because... People like y'all are here. But the season that I'm in right now, no matter what I'm going through, the people that are in my life right now, the church that is here right now, it helps me get through the days. It helps me get through when I have a valley or when I have something bad. And then I'm also thankful for my, my family, and, and this is a blessing that nobody else can say except for Garrison and Carly, but everybody talks and brags about the pastor and pastor's wife, but I have got to live with them my entire life. And that's something that I'm just going to have to brag about. <laughs> and Lord willing, I get to live with them for a whole lot more. But uh, I can't explain. I talked about it a little bit last Sunday. And I know I'm already a couple minutes over. But we're getting close to the end, and it's still early. <laughs> but uh, I talked about it a little bit last week. But I'm thankful for what was instilled in me growing up. And... Uh, the values and the, the different things that have went into my life. And uh, I'm thankful that my family wasn't just a season, but that my family's my family, and they've always been my family and always going to be my family. And uh, as young as I've always kind of thought of myself, I'm, I'm in the middle of a generation, and I, I'm young, but I'm also old. Because my dad and mom have instilled in me all kinds of stuff that they loved. And I've loved the same thing. Songs. And, you know, I was, I was listening before church and talking to dad about some of the old gospel songs I was listening to. And they really just take my heart somewhere that some other songs just can. And, and I love the new songs. I'm a young person. I love to worship to the new songs. And I, but I love, I love the young and the old. And the old people that have gone before me. And the new people that are here. And I just feel like that there, there's something in my life that I can be a part of something from the past and the future and change this world. And I believe that the Lord wants to do something like that in this world too. Because there's a whole world out there that needs saving. And he needs people like us to do it. Whether you're young or old, no matter what your calling is, no matter what your past is, we've all got a purpose. And that's what I'm thankful for.
Okay, um, some of you may know me. My name's uh, Crystal Austin, and I debated on whether or not to stand up here because I'm not a good talker. Well, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Um, I just want to first off say what I'm thankful for. Um, all my life, I've had a wonderful childhood. My parents, God blessed me with two wonderful parents and a brother and a sister who I just adore. I mean, but I think I was always their, you know, mom and dad's favorite. But um, I can't say enough about what the Lord has done for me just in the last year. I was not raised in church. I was always scared to go to church. And um, But three years ago, you know, my, my mom always told me all my life, oh, you're, you're strong. Why, how, do you, how do you do it? How are you so strong? And I was like, no, nah, I don't know. You know, I just, I didn't know. I just thought it was me. I just thought it was my flesh. You know, it was, that's who I was. I was a strong person. I was there for everybody. Well, three years ago when I had unexpected breast cancer and, you know, I thought, oh, I'm, I can do this. I can do it on my own. No problem. You know, well, I did do it on my own. I thought until, you know, I just kept thinking that, oh, it's all me. I've made it through that. It's all me. Well, fast forward to November of, November 16th of 2020, and when I lost my mom, and, you know, that, that was my person. She was my rock, and I didn't know how I was going to make it without her, but I, I realized, you know, when I fell down on my knees and I heard this voice that I've never heard before saying, come to me, I can help you, just come to me. And I was, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm listening to this voice in my head and I knew it was, it was God. He was telling me, if you come to me, I will help you through this. And he did. He helped me overcome my loneliness. Because without my person, who was I going to talk to? I didn't have anybody. Hadn't, I mean, you have friends, but it's nothing like the, the connection that you feel when you, when you pray or when you talk to God and give your problems all to him. And, it, you know, it's like, how, how did I get through breast cancer? How did I get through mom? Well, it was God carrying me. He had me. He had me, and he was saying, come go with me. I'm going to lead you to where you need to be. And he did. He led me here with everybody that has accepted me like family, that has, you know, just treated me like I was, like I've been here all my life, you know. And he's blessed me with two wonderful kids. I get to sit here tonight next to my son and with Kaylee. They're my world. And now I understand what my mom said when she said, when you have kids, it's a different kind of love. You will know. You will. She's like, I can't explain it. And I was like, okay, you know, whatever. But now I understand. I mean, I've, Caleb, you're just an amazing young man. You, God is blessing you. He's showing you what, what he can offer you. And I can't say enough about how proud I am of you and Kaylee. No, Kaylee, I'm not saying Caleb's a favorite. <laughs> she's, back, <laughs> she's back there thinking, yeah, well, she just had to go and say his name first. <laughs> Kaylee, you make me proud too, and I see God working so much in your life. He has brought you. He, he had your path and John Michael's path cross. It was in a time of unexpected you know when John Michael lost his paw Kaylee lost her granddad which was my mom their paths crossed God brought them together just like he brought me and sister Amanda together 32 years ago and I knew pastor back then too and we may have lost connections over the years but I can't tell you both how thankful I am what you've done for me what you've taught me the word the gospel the I've had walls built up I've had a wonderful life but what people don't see are the emotional walls you put up 
You put up emotional walls because you don't want anybody to see your weaknesses. But when you talk in elements class, when you're up here and you're speaking the word and God is speaking through you, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm a changed person for the better, for the better. Because without God, I would not be standing here. You know, I wouldn't go, I may not have went in the direction that he wants me to be. And he's blessed me with a job that I truly love. I teach kindergarten. Those are my babies. I love them like they're my own. And I, I've got little Angel in my class, and he is a blessing to me. He is, He's just an amazing little boy. And so I just want to close by saying thank you all for accepting me and my, all my craziness. <laughs> But I love you guys. I love everybody that I've met. And I thank God for keeping me here and leading me here and just being my person that I can talk to now when I don't have my mom. He's my person. And I'm so thankful. And thank you, God. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank the Lord that this microphone has not become possessed by the static demon throughout the entirety of the service. Um, this is usually the one we have problems with. In February of this year, I broke, well, smashed would probably be a better word, my ankle. And that seems probably to be a weird thing to be thankful for. But as a result of that, I lost a job that I was miserable at. Literally cried every day on the way to work. Stayed until about four hours past the time I was supposed to go home and cried the whole way home. And I kind of just felt like that's the way life was going to be for a while. Well, lost that job. And I'm kind of wondering, okay, you know, what now? And I applied for a job at Boho Counseling Services. The job that I have now... I applied for probably about eight years ago and was told I wasn't qualified for. Still have the same qualifications now. So it was a God thing. And my goal all along is what I wanted to do in the career. I love to help people. That's just who I am. That's my nature. And I get to do that every day now. I get to talk to people who are going through some of the worst things that they've ever been through. And I have to be very careful because, I mean, obviously I can't, you know, project my own religious, you know, ideas onto them, but I can pray for them. So I feel like I'm where God wants me to be. And the job that I have now has kind of opened the door to where I can further my education and go further in the field than I am in now. And I'm just very thankful for that. <laughs> Best for last. <laughs> um, okay, as some of you may not know, but my name's Ashley, and I get very nervous talking in front of people. So bear with me, but uh, I'm very thankful for my family. I have healthy kids. I have a healthy husband. I have two healthy animals, a cat and a dog named Gizmo and Simba, <laughs> and I love them very much, and I have a job that I'm so thankful for. I had a job that I left recently that I thought would answer some questions I've had recently, but it didn't. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. Um, sometimes you need to stay where you're at. <laughs> and so now I'm back, and um, I know I'm where I'm supposed to be because recently I don't pray for people like Larry said, <laughs> but I've prayed for three people this and they've actually, one of them has actually took my hand and put it on their head. 
and said, I need prayer right now. Like, pray for me. And so I was like, okay. Like, and it happened. I don't know where it came from, but it happened. <laughs> so it was God, for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, um, that's happened recently. So I know that God is dealing with me and trying to get me out of my shell because I have several that I can't break out of, you know, anxiety, depression, <laughs> self-worth, all that stuff. But with everyone's help here, <laughs> I know things are going to get better. So I just want to say I'm thankful for God keeping his hand on me when I've not listened to him in the past and him always leaving that still small voice when things get awful and get dark. I can always hear it. I don't ever want to not hear it. And I'm thankful for everyone here. And I'm mainly thankful for the Riverbend kids because y'all don't know what you do to my heart every day. So proud of y'all. Every one of y'all. I'm so thankful I get to be back there with y'all. All right. I love it. Everybody here, thank you. feel like we could just say, I, I don't know, Brother Blake, I, I felt the spirit too. I don't know whether we ought to gather and pray <laughs> and seize the moment. Um, I'm thankful for everybody that got up. Um, it's not easy. Public speaking is one of the most difficult things people have. Um, and you're all going to think I'm a liar. But I had that same feeling everywhere except church. I didn't talk out in class. I didn't raise my hand. I was scared to death, except at church. And uh, I got delivered from that other stuff. I'm not scared anywhere now, really. But uh, uh, there were some incredible testimonies. Thank you. Thank you. I'm grateful for you all testifying tonight. Man, that was, that was just rich. And uh, to see the blessings of God and see the lives that God is working in. And one of the blessings that I have as a pastor is I know things everybody else doesn't know. And I saw growth in everybody up here without exception. There's growth. And uh, I, uh, several of you said that this church treated me like I was worth something. And I just wanted to, Brother Ronnie, I wanted to take a lap because you can't cook that up when you shoot for it and it happens and it's like the Lord said I told you I'd do it if you just preached it I'd do it if you just believed it and we've always been a church that loved people don't misunderstand me we've always been a church that loved people but we were sometimes afraid to show it. And uh, we got love and approval mixed up. My kids cannot make me not love them anymore. They don't have that much power. Now, I'm going to tear their tail up because I don't approve of everything they're doing. But that didn't mean I don't love them. You can't make me not love you. And the thing I've learned is I can't make him not love me. And I'm thankful for that. I want to say I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. I'm thankful for this church. I, uh, I'm thankful for my wife, Amanda. I looked up a poem I was going to read for you tonight, baby. But all these fellas, they get mad at me when I... But Elizabeth Barrett Browning wrote a poem that said, How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. And uh, the truth is, I, I can't count them. I love you, baby. And uh, I'm thankful for this church because every good thing in my life I owe to this church. Every good thing. My parents, 
Um, if it hadn't been for this church, who knows where me and mama would have ended up or who we'd have ended up with because it was just us when the Lord reached down and got a hold of daddy. And uh, so I'm thankful for this church. I do owe my life to this church. I got my wife here. We dedicated our children here. Um, my ministry was formed here. I didn't preach my first message here, but it was formed here. But I'm thankful for my sons and daughters, Tripp and Sophia, Garrison. And I didn't know whether to put Paige in there yet or not. I was going to. I put it in parentheses. But when she didn't get up there and talk, she's going to have to just wait her turn. <laughs> because I remember there was a time when Garrison flew the coop on Thanksgiving night. And Paige just brought the house down, thanking God for me and Amanda and everything. And now he came back in the picture, Brother David, and I am chopped liver, <laughs> spam, potted meat, and Vienna sausages, head cheese. That's me. Souse. That's me. So she just going to have to wait her turn to get... I ain't put her in my favorite yet either. I got my favorite list. Tripp, Garrison, Carly, Sophia, and Amanda in my favorites list. And she's just going to have to wait her turn. I was thinking about moving her in early, but not now. And I'm thankful for my grandbaby, Lottie. Man, oh, man, oh, man. She don't really understand everything I'm saying. But if she ever figures out what she does to me, I'm through. <laughs> I am through. The other day she was pecking on my cheek. She was not hitting me because I don't let her hit me. Much as I love her, she ain't hitting me. Okay? You can ask her mammy. I don't, Grandpa don't fly like that. I ain't letting them, you let them start hitting you when they're babies. They'll keep on hitting you. I mean, that ain't funny, but it's the truth. But she was pecking me here on my face, and I pretended like it hurt. And so I cried, and she gave me a kiss. And then she did it again, so I cried, and she gave me a kiss, and then she backed off, and she said, I saw it. And I thought, I'm not really sure what she would have to do that that wouldn't work to fix everything. So I'm glad she doesn't understand everything I'm saying. But if y'all would have heard, I'm sorry. Didn't care what it was. She could be carrying a bazooka around shooting at their grandpa. And she said, I'm sorry. I said, that's good, baby. That's good. I'm thankful for Mama and Jerry. Thankful for Carol. I'm really thankful for Johnny. I know he's not with us, but he taught me a whole lot of stuff. Some of it what not to do. But I found out he taught me a lot of things. Uh, about plumbing and heating and cooling and electric. I can, have, I can do receptacles and put breakers in. He taught me all that. Thankful for our team, the team we have presently and for the team that God's building, future team, it's going to expand. But I want to focus my thanks, just like Brother David and, and some others, on our recovery ministry. Um. River Bend Recovery. I'm going to say this. If you've never been to River Bend Recovery, you owe it to yourself to go at least one time. I first felt Pentecost at River Bend Recovery. And what I mean by that is they were all in one accord in one place when the sound came from heaven. And I sat there completely enveloped in purpose that everybody in that room was there for the same reason. And I really felt the power of the Holy Ghost so rich. I didn't come back for about a year and a half purposefully. Nobody made me feel unwelcome, but I stayed away on purpose. And then in February, I started coming back. And I don't think I've missed two or three times since then. And uh, 
Brother Ronnie gave me a book called Slay in the Dragon. It's the history of addiction recovery, I guess, in the United States, maybe particular. But it says this. In the introduction, it says the book, it is written for the recovery advocates who are widening the doors of entry for recovery, which means there's a lot more pathways to recovery today than there used to be. But here's the way I'm going to say it. River Bend Recovery widened the door for revival to the River Bend Pentecostals. Because we were introduced to the power of God in a way that we had preached for a long time but never learned to practice. And that is loving people into a relationship with Jesus Christ and being delivered from the responsibility of results. The reason why it never worked is because I was trying to make it work. When I realized there's only one who can change a life. I do, Brother Terrence, have a responsibility to plant the seed and water it. But God gives the increase. Where we became a true sanctuary. A place where someone can safely recover. A place of safely stumbling. A place where you can fall and, yes, fail safely. A place where you can grow safely. You know, growth's not always safe, Brother Larry. Because, Miss Jane, we make it a matter of performance rather than a matter of of God giving the increase. And we forced people into performing things they weren't, hadn't grown into yet. I learned through recovery that you got to let people grow in safety. A place to come to know God free from the pressure of performance. And it happened because of River Bend Recovery. I'm grateful for Joe Murphy. I'm grateful for Bernard. I know Brother Shannon often gets to be the face of the recovery, and that's only because they was too chicken in the beginning. But Joe came first, and that's only because Bernard wasn't here yet. Bernard came right in. They didn't actually talk, but Joe had been preaching the same message that Bernard started preaching, and Bernard wouldn't quit. And Brother Shannon didn't want to do it, didn't feel worthy of doing it, but he came, became the poster boy for what recovery means to this church. And uh, they all work together to make that our ministry. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that for the first time in my 48 years, I feel like I'm who God wants me to be because we get to touch lives. I'm thankful, and she'll probably always be Miss Jane, but I'm thankful that she trusts me, and, uh, and that's a big deal. That's a big deal, and uh, um, don't be worried about Miss Jane. Don't worry about her. God's moving in her life in ways he never has. Because she was only coming for services. <laughs> That's what she told me. That wasn't debatable. It wasn't soft. It was, we're only going to come for services, and then we're going to crank back up at the mission. And she's never left. And I'm thankful for that. <laughs> thankful. 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 Let's all stand. Sister Stacy, I too, am, I was sitting there grinning like a mule eating briars when so many people got up and, and then didn't, 
didn't know who one another was. And uh, well, two things from that. One, that's exciting. Number two, it can't stay that way for long. I've been, Brother Billy, I want to thank you. I saw Brother David doing it. I, I bragged on him. I've seen Brother Billy purposefully going to folks and say, Hi, I'm Bill Tanner. Don't believe I've met you yet. Do it. That's not a request. Do it. Brother David, last, last week, I believe it was, was milling all around in the front, shaking hands with people. Introduce yourself. You heard testimonies tonight. Debbie, your testimony blew me away when you said I'm going Christmas shopping with my own paycheck. Man. I give you thanks this moment and I will continually for each day I live, your grace you give, and I'm blessed abundantly. And I can't forget that moment when in my life you made such a change. Since the Spirit came, I've not been the same, and I give you all the thanks. And I just want to say thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done I am so blessed my soul has found rest oh Lord I am so blessed my soul think about that my soul's found rest Can we lift our hands and thank the Lord? Just as one voice, as one voice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's all because of you. You deserve all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Lord, without you, we're nothing. I'm thankful, God, for every testimony, for every blessing, for every voice. I'm praying for every soul that is in this building tonight. Thank you. They're here on purpose. They're here on purpose. They're here on purpose. Thank you all. Thank you all so much. Thank you all. May I, I want to comment on Macy's testimony as well. She, she came back in the summer, as she said, and then she said, I found out I was off, and I came to church, and, and I love this church. I mean, really, it knocked, knocked me over with a feather because this is what we've been dreaming about. This is what we've been preaching about. This is what we've been praying about. And the Lord, Brother Shannon, has given the increase. He promised he would. He promised he would. Go home, on your way home, maybe, if you got somebody extra in the car, pull up YouTube. Type in Andre Crouch and my tribute. And the song says, to God be the glory for the things he has done. He, the first line says, how can I say thanks? How can I say thanks for all that you've done for me? To God be the glory for the things he has done. How many have enjoyed the service tonight? Huh? Thank you for coming and being a part of it. Thank you so much. Thank God for what he's doing. Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, we're going to have elements. Let me tell you something. You better get there early. It's filling up. It's filling up. Donuts and coffee and good conversation. That's what it is. Good conversation and growth. And so excited. We love all of you. Make sure you smile at somebody. Tell them you appreciate them. And uh, we'll see you Sunday morning at 10 o'clock.